In a moment, I'm going to come from one to three, and you're going to move to a few moments before your transition out of that life. Just a few moments before you die. You may detach yourself from any discomfort, but observe the events and circumstances that lead to your death in that life. One, two, three. What's happening? One of the other raids, a man came back. And he raped me. And he's putting his cigarettes out on my skin. What are you thinking or feeling in that experience? I just want it to be over. Hi, I'm Aisha Hogan and this is the Chakra House of Healing. That clip you just heard was actually me in a past life regression, actually something called an Akashic Clearing, which you're going to hear about in a little bit. And that was actually my death in one of my lives. Right now I'm with Tarek Sitar from Ontario Hypnosis Center and we're in the episode of Talk That Talk. Before we get into this a little bit further, let's take a Zen break. Hi there, my name's Tree, and I'm a certified yoga instructor. Um, and we're talking about chakras. So it's really important to, to connect every single chakra at once. And there's a really great posture, yoga posture, for doing that. It's called plank pose. Most people don't like it, but I love teaching it all the time. <laughs> So we're going to get in, this is my assistant Melanie, and she's going to get into plank pose. So you want to make sure that your hands are underneath your shoulders, okay? So there's different variations of this. So when you're in plank pose, you're hugging everything into the midline. So your chakras are all through your midline. So it's, you're forced to hug your core in. Now this is really tough, and Melanie's doing a fantastic job, but there's other options. You can bring your knees down, okay? And that takes pressure off the shoulders and breathing through the crown of the head helps connect as well. Thanks for watching, take care. So Tark, um, an Akashic clearing. Before we get into that, I don't know where we should start. It's such a big topic. Do we start with past life regression? It's a little we could. We could start um, discussing past life regression. Um, but I wanted to just very briefly bring it back to what, where we started okay. with the talk that talk, um, looking at energy and what is energy. And right. this is actually very relevant to that topic. Yeah. I mean, we were looking at what energy is and how it affects us. And nothing is more evident of energy being pervasive and affecting you throughout and across the course of your life right. um, other than what you would experience from a past life being able to observe something um, that you experienced in a life before this one that is still affecting you in this one. Yeah. And um, in my own studies, when I came across past life regression, that's how I actually got started with hypnosis, there wasn't anything that I had um, done that were along the lines of the Akashic clearing. But with um, the past life regression, just so that people can understand it, the past life regression is basically we're going back to another life. Right to figure out maybe a trauma or something that we need to help us understand something that we're going through in this life. Exactly. And sometimes we can figure that out through hypnosis that we've hit like a plateau yes. and we need to go to a past life in order to find that little piece that we're missing Right. and then bring that, go into the past life, figure it out, figure out what's happened right. and then bring that piece back so that we can go further with the hypnosis. Exactly. And we, we would like to call it bringing the wisdom of the experience right. back. So the experiences that our clients have when they go through past life can vary. So you, we have people who actually heal physically, Yeah. Um, having done in session. Most clients come in for emotional healing. Um, oftentimes it's just understanding the self better. I would often recommend to my clients that when they're doing the sessions, two things um, are what they should be focusing on the questions that they want to have answers to, and then right. allowing those answers to come to them. But if they don't get the answers they're seeking, then maybe they discover a different way to ask the question. Sure. And so that's just changing perspective. 
And it's about intention too. It is. It absolutely is about intention. So past life regression is a soul journey. Um, whether you believe in it or not, you can still have a powerful release. It can be a cathartic release um, for those who don't believe in reincarnation. It's just I some told some way. of my clients, you know, if some of the past lives that I've gone through, mm. let's just say, hypothetically, it wasn't a past life and it was something that my mind conjured. It mm. was a, a piece of imagination, something that my subconscious is trying to send me a message. Right and they're sending it to me in this way, right. really the end result means I'm healing. Absolutely, it's the same thing. So whether you're tapping into a real lived experience, whether you're tapping into um, an experience from someone else through the collective consciousness, right. Whether it's your own mind, your own unconscious mind creating this metaphor for you. What is the collective consciousness? So the collective consciousness is something that Jung spoke about and it basically is all the experiences of all of our species being kind of gathered up into this... In the big pool. Yeah, think of it as like a big thought cloud up in the universe out there somewhere and every experience we're having is kind of being generated and put up there. And if you look at um, our current generation with technology, it seems like a two-year-old could use an iPad, like the moment you give it <laughs> yeah, to them. Yeah, they all would go and see them with their little thing. <laughs> right. Them. And yet you have someone who's like 40 or 45 taking five days to figure it out. And, you know, it's almost as if kids are born with an awareness of how to use technology. Whereas because those, maybe they're learning from the, the collective right. consciousness. So that stream of awareness is there in the collective and they're coming in with that kind of already a part of their consciousness. And part of our healing, which I think is really interesting, it was something that you were in your teachings that you were saying is that as we start healing ourselves, right. we're actually healing the collective consciousness because Absolutely. that negativity that we've been feeling is now removed right. and replaced with positive energy and healed energy. Absolutely. And that heals actually everyone. And if you think of a culture where people are, are oppressed and you know um, having to deal with a lot of difficulty all the time, you can find uh, almost everyone in the culture as being that way and it's very difficult to get out of that mindset. But once someone starts to make positive movement forward, I mean Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, these are just individuals who right. started a process by adding their own awareness into the collective and then it builds and grows with their followers and as the, that collective begins to manifest and become bigger you see more and more people joining the movement and it becomes a bigger movement until more people recognize the need for change um, at a fundamental level so it's the same thing happening yeah. when you're healing you're actually healing people that are closer to you in your collective and it ripples out right so now the Akasha clearing that I went through. So right. we, we took me through four lives. We did. So how we did this process for you specifically was um, there's a regular past life regression session where you would go through maybe one or two lives in a two hour session and you're observing patterns and you know, you're, you're learning right. from those patterns and you're healing. But what we did with you in this particular experience is we took you to the interlife. Right. And the interlife is what we call that space between lifetimes. And from that perspective, um, you can get, think of it as heaven. Right. You look back down through the stream of all of your experiences and focusing your intention on a particular challenge you're facing, you allow that energy to guide you into some very specific lives where you're, you were dealing with that particular right. issue. So my intention on this one when we went in was that why am I always the handler? Right. Why am I always the one who's taking care of everything? Right. And getting no positive feedback after I do that. Right. So just my frustration of being my whole life, just being the person who takes care of everybody and everything. Exactly. So we went into the first life. Right. And I was a 15 year old girl trying to, a dam had broken in this place where I was living right. and people were drowning and I was trying to save everybody. Right. And couldn't. Well, I mean, it's just, one person, right? But right away you start to see the correlation between that experience and what you do in your life now, always putting other people ahead of yourself. Right. And how did that life end? It ended with me dying, saying that I wasn't strong enough and I wasn't smart enough and I wasn't enough. I wasn't feeling like I was enough. Right. But you exhausted all of your resources, all of your energy, everything that you were trying to do was kind of spent. I felt, and I felt defeated. Right. And so even though you were spending all of that energy of that time, you know, all of that effort on helping other people, at the end of the day, you felt defeated. And so you kind of left that experience, um, maybe with a mindset that, why am I even bothering? But yet there's a part of you that's so strongly conditioned, um, perhaps it's your, a life path, a soul path that you're walking, that's so strongly conditioned to be of help, to be of assistance to others. 
but you have to then learn how you can fulfill that function, that purpose, while still taking care of the self. Right. And then the second life, I was the what the heck was this? The second life was the nun. That was the nun, I believe. That yes. was the nun. So the second life was the nun, and that's where I was <laughs> a mother superior, which would be funny to those who know me. And so I was a nun, and we were looking after a, a, an orphanage of boys right. in a very poor place in Mexico. Yes. And the children were being taken and sold. Yes. So I was trying to save the children and couldn't. And during my death, one of the men that were stealing the children had come back right. and raped me. Right. And was putting cigarettes out on my skin. And when you asked me how I felt about that, I was saying it didn't matter. I just wanted it to be over because I felt like I couldn't do anything in that life. The same pattern, right? you done everything you could given all you can, and yet here you are powerless again at the end of the day. Now, we don't want to dismiss these lives as being, oh well, you know, you just gave too much of yourself. Right. Or, because there's wisdom, there's a lesson that's being learned here. And we kind of want to honor these aspects of yourself from those past lives in terms of what they're teaching you and how they're teaching you. And, you know, if you pay attention to how energy flows, you've come to recognize in your life now that there is still this tendency to give, 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 right? And then, well, what you receive in return isn't really. But it's different. It's, it, now I feel like I'm enough, whereas then I didn't, and that was the piece that I came back with. Right. So actually, that was the third life because the second life was the one where I was the nurse. Oh yes. In yes, the yes. in the war, and all the soldiers were dying. And you. Cried. And I couldn't I couldn't pick them up from under the rubble, and they were dying, and it was killing me. They were young boys, and then I died in that one by fever at a virus in my blood and it was again because I felt useless not being able to save these boys as a nurse Right. and the, they didn't even understand why they were in this war because they were so young and not being able to help them Right. so that was again that feeling of not being enough not being strong enough not being enough I was just never felt like I was enough I was asked to do these things in these lives of helping people and yet I was not given the tools, I felt, I was not given the tools to be able to do that. Now, now you feel you are enough. Now I do. But when now you were I younger, what was your life experience like? When I was younger, I was the same way. I felt like um, I was trying to help people, friends, family, always putting myself out there, opening my home, opening my heart, and people would just dismiss it or get what they wanted and leave. Right. And I felt like I wasn't making the um, impression that I wanted to make. And I think that it was in the last life where it really hit home, where I was a young boy of eight years old right. and I needed to help my classmates because there was, I don't even know exactly where we were, but there was men with guns and our teacher was trying to hide us from the men. And as the teacher went out, she was killed. Right. I escaped and I blamed myself right. for not being able to do certain things to also help my teacher and my classmates escape. And as an older man, when we brought me to my death, all I heard was my teacher screaming. All I heard was her ask, you know, begging for help. And I felt like it was my fault that right. she died. As an eight-year-old boy, I don't know what I was supposed to do, right. but I felt like it was my fault that, sh that she died, and I ended up shooting myself. I committed suicide in that life. Now, wasn't there some awareness that came to you after you died in that life that the teacher wanted you to get out? I thought I'd remember something like that being said, where the teacher was concerned for you, obviously. Because I wanted to stand up and open the window that right. we could escape out of, that, that's that window that I knew that we could get out of, but I was too afraid. Right. So when I went to stand up to open the window, she made me go back down again. I think about that now and it's just like, you know, at the time I was an eight year old boy mm -hmm. thinking my teacher had just died and it was my fault. Right. So once again, I wasn't enough. I wasn't strong enough or smart enough or, or brave enough to open that window to help with my classmates and my teacher. There's and I took that on myself. Like I don't, like, you know, 
I wasn't the only one in the classroom, and that window wasn't only known to me. Right, but there's a certain <laughs> difference from that experience where, you know, in the other three, you were doing everything you could, you did everything you could, you were trying your best, and then it, it didn't work out. But in this one, when you took care of yourself, what was the result? It was guilt. It was guilt. Guilt that led to... To me killing myself. Right. And so it's almost as if there was a part of you that was saying, you know, if you were to put yourself first, then that's a no-no, you know, and all you're going to experience as a result of that is guilt. Right. But that's not the case anymore. That's right. And I think some other people must have experienced that because, you know, there, there's even books about there about don't feel noticed or don't feel guilty to say no. Right. Right. Which will, I always put myself out there before where if I didn't help somebody, I felt guilty about not doing it right. instead of putting myself first. On that note, we're going to have to take a break. Okay. And uh, let's take a Zen break. Lomi Lomi Massage uses circles and figure eights to encourage the brain to surrender from mental thought. This is where the client can heal by releasing cellular memories and emotions. Lomi Lomi Massage evokes many different reactions. Some people surrender to the beautiful, flowing movements and experience a relaxing massage. The art of Lomi Lomi Massage has developed out of the Hawaiian practice of living aloha, which simply means to honor the divinity in all things. Welcome back from that break. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to hear the Akasha Clearing in full, it is about an hour and you will find it on my YouTube channel. But for now, Tarek, you heard it all. Mm -hmm. It's very emotional. What did you take away from it? Well, first and foremost, I think it's amazing that you allowed yourself to really feel the emotions that you're feeling in that experience. That's where the healing occurs. You know, we have a ceiling. You have to feel it to heal it. So yep, it was sure. great that you did that. I found it interesting that there were a number of patterns that repeated throughout the whole experience that you then yep. re-experienced in this life, at the earlier part of your life, but which changed. Yes. And it was almost as if going through this journey in of itself was kind of what solidified that change that helped you to realize, yep. not just intellectually, but emotionally, that you are enough. And yeah. you accepted it. It was a great feeling. It wasn't a great feeling that night. Right. I felt like I'd been hit by a bus. But by the next morning, I felt really good. But what did you... I mean, this is the most important thing. In, in any facilitation of these types of journeys, it's not the facilitator who gives the answers. It's the client. Because right. that's what you are discovering, right? From the experience of the journey, you're finding answers that no one else can give you. So what did you connect with? Well, I did learn um, that I am enough. I did learn that all those people's journeys, all those people that died around me had their own lessons to learn and it, it had nothing to do with me and I couldn't have changed it if I wanted to and I guess I was so hurt but in the end I was actually so full of myself to even think that I could have controlled all of those people's lives and the outcome in all of those people's lives. See, that's very wise, because if I had said that to you, you'd go, yeah, I understand that. But it would not connect in the way yeah, that no, you no, are Yeah, no, no, I figured it out on my own at, near the end, and it was, it was a realization that it wasn't, um, it wasn't about me. Right. It wasn't about, I, was, I actually was living my, my lesson and was following my path. My problem was I wasn't getting it. Right. And I just had to keep living that lesson over and over again until I got it. And the wonderful piece about that is that I actually know that I've got it now. Right. And that I'm not going to have to learn that lesson again because right. I am enough. And as much as I do 
it's okay. Absolutely. Like, if it doesn't work out exactly the way that I want it to, that's okay because it wasn't meant to. Because the people who are also entwined in that, they have different lessons to learn, and I, I, that's not under my control. Right. They have their journey, you have yours. So it was very liberating, to say the least. It made me feel so much better about a lot of the things that I've been going through. So it's fantastic. I think that you know the past life regression, the Akashic clearing, should definitely be something in someone's spiritual healing, especially if they've lived a dysfunctional life. Absolutely. I think because it, it helps a lot. And you can see dysfunction um, if it's pervasive in your life as a replication of energies that have been with you perhaps for a long time, even from past lives. And these journeys can help you do what is necessary to finally release it all. Yeah. It was a great experience. More to come. More to come. More to come. <laughs> so much to talk about. But if somebody wanted to contact you, Tarek, how would they do that? Well, you can reach me at the Ontario Hypnosis Centre online at www.ontariohypnosiscentre.com or you can call us at telephone number 416-489-0333. It's great. Thanks again. My pleasure. Love having you on the show every month. It's amazing and we get to talk about some really great issues. Um, if you have any questions about today's episode or any other episodes of Talk That Talk or if you want to talk to me about your own clearing, if you want, if you have some suggestions on something you would like to see, please give me a call or contact me at www.thechakrahouseofhealing.com. Feel free to always call me 416-559-3674. Again, I'm here to empower, enlighten, and educate. Thank you so much for coming out today and sharing my Akashic clearing with me. Thank you.